Now here in this video we are going to talk about EC2 that is Elastic Compute Club. So as we have discussed already about uh, IaaS service that is called as Infrastructure as a Service. So when we talk about deploying an infrastructure or you know providing infrastructure services, the very first topic which we need to cover that is your EC2 that is called as Elastic Compute Cloud. So all the computational needs what exactly the user has will be again fulfilled over here. So let us see what the EC2 is. Now, If I talk about EC2, it is again a scalable computing capacity in a cloud so that whenever you want to access that particular cloud service so that you can use the infrastructure, you can use the infrastructure. So uh, whenever you want, you can modify the infrastructure as well. Like uh, I have purchased one server. Now if I want to increase the number of server, I can. Whenever I want to decrease the server, I can. So it is scalable capacity is provided to you. Even you can scale uh, the configuration of your servers, which you have. Like sometimes I have a huge amount of RAM. Now I want to reduce it lower amount of RAM I can do it same way I say I can extend the RAM as well next if I talk about the EC2 it again eliminates your need to invest in your hardware as I said uh, whatever you are going to create how many servers you're going to create that will be located in the cloud so nothing will be you know at your place so automatically it eliminates the investment what you do into your hardware infrastructure as well as uh, the you know the area or the space which actually will be required by your infrastructure will again be reduced over here next if i talk about ec2 it develop and deploy your application faster so if i want to deploy some application so as we know we need to develop it first so it is easier to develop it and then you can deploy it with the easiest way as well as the fastest way next if i talk about your ec2 it can create a few or many server instances and if I've created one server or one instance I can run it if I have created multiple instance even I can run most of the servers at a time configure security and network and manage your storage on the instances like if I have already created any particular servers onto my uh, cloud and I want to manage the security so that all the particular users who are able to access my um, virtual machine or the, my server should not be able, able to access the complete server. So I can even define some security or some permissions for my users like what extent they can manage our servers. So we can provide a security. We can create networks. We can even create a sub network. So if you know the basic concepts of networking, you may be knowing about the sub networks. If not, we are going to discuss it later ahead. So uh, networking and subnetting is nothing but you are going to divide your actual uh, private network into multiple divisions, sorry, public network into multiple divisions so that um, the particular divisions which you have created will be able to communicate only within them. So just an example I can take like uh, you have an organization and you have multiple teams sitting at your organization like your one is training division, one is your service division and other is your management so if this kind of divisions are there and you want that only training people should be able to communicate with the training department security people should be able to uh, communicate with the security as well as the marketing people should be able to communicate only with the marketing so you can create a sub networks and i can manage the instances for different sub network which i have created and also you can manage the storage for example i have um, uh, define the same storage space for three of my teams like my so service teams having three or uh, some capacity of my storage same way my training team has some capacity of the storage I have allocated to it now suddenly your training division has uploaded many things onto a cloud and the storage is completely full now if it is required to uh, extend the storage so you can even easily extend the storage as well as whenever we want to decrease the storage amount of storage you can do that as well next if i talk about uh, scale up or down to handle changes in the requirements so as i said it is scalable computing capacity in the cloud so that whenever i want to scale my requirements so i want to increase the number of servers i can i want to decrease the number of servers i can so uh, this flexibility is again provided to you Next, if I talk about the features of EC2, so as we have discussed, EC2 is a cloud compute environment 
where generally we can create a virtual machine. So each and every virtual machine which you are going to create in the cloud will be called as an instance. So this is a technical word we should know. So this technical terms will be used when you are going to use your AWS. Same way, the same words, technical words will be used even your in your examination. So certification exams. So this is a virtual compute environment, which is also known as instances. Now, if again I talk about your EC2 feature, like some pre-configured templates are again available into your EC2. So for example, um, I'm going to uh, do some practicals on my Linux operating system and I don't have any DVD of my Linux to install my Linux operating system. So what we can do is we can uh, directly use a predefined or pre-configured templates called as AMI, called as Amazon Machine Images, which is a pre-installed applications or we can say operating systems which are available onto your Amazon. And this package, the bits you need for your server, including the operating system and some additional software. So if suppose I want um, my Amazon machine images to be used, I can directly start my virtual machine so I can create a snap of it and the snaps will be used for, uh, as a dedicated server created by me. So we can even use um, Amazon machines templates which are available. Or if I want to configure a complete raw machine, I want to configure my operating systems or install my operating systems by my own so that I can easily partition as I require. So I can even do that is using a raw servers. Now again, you can secure your login information for your instances using the key pairs. So as if like uh, any particular user is accessing your virtual machine and you want to restrict those users so that directly he should not be able to access. So whenever he want to access your virtual machine, he should be asked for a pair or key pair. So if this key pair is available to him, he will be able to access it, otherwise won't be able to. So this key pair can be your Amazon web service provider's public key, or you can store your private key and secure this particular place. Next, if I talk about your um, next feature of your EC2 is the storage volume of a temporary data uh, gets deleted as you stop or terminate your instance. Like any particular uh, virtual machine when you create, it creates some temporary data. So those temporary data will be deleted as you shut down your virtual machine or stop your virtual machine, which is also known as instance store volume. So this volume space where generally you store your temporary data is called as instance store volumes. So if I want the data to be stored permanently, we can even create a persistent storage called as Amazon Elastic Block Store. So this will be used for storing my data on my EC2. Next, if I talk about your next feature of your EC2 is you can create a multiple backup or multiple instance on different locations so that your data is secure. So as if I'm talking about the Amazon Web Services, it is a, a service provider which will ensure your data security, which we have already discussed into our previous slides. So if I'm talking about securing my data, I need to store my data into different locations. So you can even create different instance into different region or different zones. So you can create um, and save your data into that particular location. So in spite of creating different servers, even you can keep a backup of your storage onto different locations. So whenever you are able to access your uh, you know, virtual machines or any particular physical machine, you can directly connect to your EC2 or, you know, physical environment so that you can directly connect your data even though any particular disaster occurred. So the data and uh, security or you can say the data availability is always provided to you. So next, if I talk about your uh, Amazon Web Service, a firewall also uh, is enabled onto your virtual machine so that it can identify the protocols or the ports which are allowed or trusted so that um, any particular packets coming in from those particular ports or protocol will be allowed. Other particular ports and protocols will be denied. So, so this particular firewall can be enabled onto your um, 
Amazon Web Instances or we can say EC2 instance. And the source IP ranges that can uh, reach your instance using your security group. So you, uh, we are also going to discuss about security group, how we can create a security group, how we can enable the security access, or we can say the access permissions to anyone, or how we can deny those permissions. So we can even define those permissions in your firewall. Next, if I talk about uh, your EC2, again, we can even define a static version for address for your dynamic cloud computing so even you can define a static ip address to your computing or you know the cloud server computer which you have which is also known as elastic ip addressing so we can also define this elastic ip addressing we'll see this practically later ahead metadata is also known as a tags that you can create and assign your amazon ec2 resources so you can also add some EC2 resources to your uh, instance which you have created. So this is again called as EC2 resources. So you can check what other resources are available into your EC2. Virtual networks you can create. As I said, you can even divide a network into multiple logical divisions or you can keep a common network so that everyone connect with each other. Now if optionally I want to connect my own network using um, a private connection so you can also use your virtual private cloud so anytime you can connect to your server anytime you can connect to your uh, machines which you have connected over here and you can easily use this so this was the features what we exactly have your for your ec2 so into next session we are going to get started with your ec2 we will configure it practically so keep watching and get upgraded so into our previous session, we have discussed about your EC2. So EC2 is your elastic compute cloud. So as we know, um, for getting started with your EC2, there are some prerequisites what we need to do. So very first, the settings which we need to do before we started with EC2 is first, sign up for your AWS. So as we know, when we are going to access our AWS services, before that, we need to sign up. So either you can directly go for a paid account or you can create a free tier which is for 30 days then we need to create an iam user now iam is nothing but your identity access management where we are going to create a user which will be authenticated for accessing the virtual machine which you are going to create on the cloud and then we are going to create our instance so very first we are going to sign up for your aws so let's get started with signing up your AWS service and then how we are going to access and create your EC2 services. So for that, very first, what I need to do is I'll go on your Google and I'll search for AWS. So as we know, on AWS, we will just move on to your AWS cloud computing services. There's a website of your AWS. So you can see over here, you can create an AWS account from here. And if you create an AWS account, it will be a paid account which will be created. So you just need to do is, you can assign your ID and you can click on I am a new user. And then you can sign in for a secure server. Then it will ask you for your credentials. Now, the credentials which I'm going to do is this is my demo account. And I'm going to copy my email address again. Create a new password so I can create new password here. Once you have created the password, just you need to click on create account. So, this is the login credentials which you have provided. And now it's asking you for complete detail, your company detail, then your personal account detail, and you need to click over here uh, so that you agree for the AWS agreement. So it is showing you this generally your account. It will be on your valid email address, what you have provided over here. It contains a third party content may be used by you at some at your elections like if you are getting some services the third party applications can also be used by you changes what you can do here security and data privacy is provided to you your responsibility what's your responsibility is provided to you take up your backup of your data 
and everything will be done by you login credentials and account keys fees and payment the service fees you can see here which is the important part for all the beginners we can calculate and bill fees the charges monthly we may bill more frequently for the fee cured which we expect that our account is fraudulent and risk of non-payment so um, as per you are going to use your service you can pay your fees uh, whatever the fees has been you know calculated or you can charge they will charge you monthly basis so service will be effectively when a uh, post update fees and charge on the aws site unless we expressly uh, state otherwise it in notice we may increase or add a new fee and charges for an existing service you are using by giving you an at least 30 days prior notice so this is what exactly the taxes the payment details are available over here now if uh, you are agree with it you can check it over here and you can continue creating an account so these are the mass of mandatory fields which we are going to um, create here locks in company name I'm just going to define it here on X okay address I'll just define some address okay so reach and uh, some pin code number I'll just define here phone number I can define so you may expect call from here you need to define um, your security check once done create your account so uh, it was wrong this time go for next one six d seven a okay so we have done with it now it's asking you for card holder name and credit or debit card number so that uh, when you start using your services automatically it will charge you for uh, whatever the service you have used so you can see um, charging will be again as per the card verification process will be charged uh, if in Indian rupees as I have located I reside in India so it is showing you INR 2 rupees will be charged and uh, depending upon the suite or you know the country you define so as per that the currency will be defined to you that how much currency how uh, you need to pay here so this is the complete um, information uh, you need to provide over here then you can uh, verify and your card and you can continue so you can again create a card holder's name and you can use a new address or you can give the pan information and you can verify your card and you can move ahead so we can um, define the payment information so i have just defined my um, id the credit card number expiry date and cvv number so use the contract address so i have already defined the contract address i can use the same address here I uh, can define new and it will verify your payment details so next it is asking you for identity verification so here uh, just scroll it down and here we will just define your verification and this is the phone number and this is extension for example I'll just define my number here so as you define a number you get a call and the four digit pin you need to define onto your um, call which you get right here so once we have done with that it will show you the call in progress has been completed now the identity verification complete you can continue your support plan now so you can go for your support plan it is showing you whether you are a basic user or you are a developer or you're going to do perform some business so here i'm going for a basic user and go for continue
So you have already registered and now you can work with the console. So I'm just going to sign into the console here. So I just if the email address and uh, password which we defined. So now we are on home page of your Amazon, right? So we can check for the services which we have. We can use the service which we require. And if I want to go for EC2, then we can begin with EC2 over here. So here we have completed how we can um, get logged into your Amazon Web Services. This is how we want the details you need to mention. You should have a credit card to get, um, you know, creating account on your Amazon Web Services. And then we can work with all the services which we have. So this we have completed the session into next session we are moving ahead for the next step what we have to uh, do the setup for uh, starting with your ec2 so keep watching and get upgraded so in our previous session already we have discussed about how we can sign up with your aws account now as we know we have already seen if i want to set up your ec2 we have to follow three different steps where we have completed signing up with your aws now in the second step we are going to see how to create an iam user now what we require creating an iam user iam user is nothing but we are authenticating a user so that he can access all the particular instances which we are going to create here so for authenticating and permitting a user we need to define an iam security so let us begin with IAM first. Now, first we should understand what the IAM is. So as I said, IAM is nothing but your AWS Identity and Access Management. This is a web service that helps you to secure and control access to the AWS resources for your users. So this particular security can be for anything like your any particular virtual machine you have created. So what the services you want uh, my user to access in that particular virtual machine. You can define the permission for those virtual machines as well. Now, if I talk about IAM, it controls who can use your AWS resources, or we can say authenticate, you can authenticate the resource which should be used by which user and what resources they can use and in what ways. Like, if suppose I have my storage connected to my uh, instance and I want that my user should be able to access my storage but he should not be able to store anything or store some permanent data to it. So that's the thing, the permission which we can define. So who is going to get the permission and what kind of permission he is going to get and whether what services he is authorized to use. So there are three different parameters we need to check who can and what's the authentication for that user and then the authorization for using the services. So these three things we need to keep in mind for defining your IAM. Now again, if I talk about the IAM, they are having a certain features. First of all, it share access to your uh, AWS account. So when you get login with your AWS, by default, you get login with your root account. So we cannot make any changes to root account or we are not going to share a particular password of our root account for to everyone so that everyone started using it. So in spite of that, what you can do is, we can create a user and we can authenticate those user using your IAM. So I can share access for a particular virtual machine with using a particular service IAM. Next, we can provide a granular permission. So granular permission is nothing but if suppose I have a single instance created and I have multiple users. Now one user I have provided a full control permission for my instance which I have created. So he should be able to start my virtual machine he should be able to work and save permanent data on my virtual machine and he should again be able to shut down my virtual machine but the user to which i have i want that the user should be able to start my virtual machine he should not be able to store anything to my virtual machine but he should be able to get access to all the content which has been stored and then he should not be able to shut down my virtual machine. So this kind of permissions or we can say a customized permission we can define for our instance or any kind of resources. Now it's secure access to your web 
AWS uh, resources for the applications that run on your Amazon EC2. So as said, we have different application, different resources. Even we can restrict those resources using your IAM. Identity fed, um, Federation. So if I talk about Identity Federation, there are some users who are authenticated for uh, your instance or for your resources by some other particular parameters. Like we can say, uh, you have a corporate account and through that account, that particular user is able to access any of your devices or the resources which you have connected. So that kind of user should be identified. So for identifying those users, again, you can use your IAM. Next, we have identify information for assurance. Like uh, you are using your instance and someone has requested for your instance. So who has requested the instance? We can identify the requesters so that we can provide them a proper authentication if they require and we, if we want to authenticate them. Next is PCI DSS compliance. As we know, our IAM supports your processing and uh, service and transmission of your data as well as the storage of your uh, data on your credit cards so if like you want to validate the compliance so it uses your pci and dss compliance so that uh, you can validate your credit card details so pci is nothing but payment card industry and dss is nothing but data security standards so it validates your data through this particular compliance and as we know all this particular processing data storage and um, the transaction and transmissions which we do through your credit cards are supported by some merchant or um, your service providers next we have that is integrated with many aws services so as we know your im feature is not only registered or we can say or it's not only supported for some of the features but it is integrated with many of your aws services so that we can define permissions for different services like we have a storage s3 so we can even use a permission for accessing storage for different users so we can define permissions by using your iam next we have that is eventually consistent so I am also supports replicating your data to different servers so that uh, your data replication ensures that your data integrity is maintained. Now, if again I talk about your IAM, as we know, the data has been replicated to multiple servers. But when we are replicating your IAM, it takes a little time because it creates the users, group, and security and compliance what exactly you have created. Next, it is free to use. So unless you uh, use a service, of any of your AWS feature, this particular IAM service is free for you. So you can use it on any of the services which you have. So these are the features of your IAM which we have seen. We have understood why IAM is necessary as discussed. Uh, the credentials of my root logging to everyone so I can create a number of users and I can authenticate those users so that uh, they should be able to use certain service which we want to deploy to them. So in such a way, we can create an IAM feature. So this is what exactly we have seen theoretically. In next session, we are going to see practically how we can allocate or define our IAM service for uh, in our AWS. So how we can configure it, we are going to see in the next session. So keep watching and get upgraded. So here in this video, we are going to see how we are going to create an IAM user. So as we know, IAM users are necessary to access your containers which you are going to create or access your all the particular instance which you are going to create into your AWS. So let us begin how we are going to use this. And also we have seen into our earlier stages that this particular things we are going to do so that we can access our EC2 which we are going to create into our uh, coming session. So we should be able to access this EC2. So we have already signed up for your AWS. And the second step which we are going to do that is creating an IAM user. So here we are going to create an IAM user so that we can access our EC2. So let us begin how we are going to do this. Now for that, I'm just going to start my browser. I have already logged in through my account. And um, already we have discussed how we can uh, sign up into your AWS and how we can log in through your account. And now here in this particular home page, we need to search for our service. So as we know, we are um, creating a security service that is your IAM, which we have discussed, right? So I'm just going to click on IAM. And here you get the page 
that is uh, for controlling or managing your IAM. So here we can see a dashboard. It's showing you this is an IAM user link and uh, this is IAM resources. So we don't have any user as present, uh, any groups at present and uh, no managed policies means um, the user created policies are not at all uh, present over here. And there are six roles which are available right now. Um, and identity provi providers is completely zero. So we haven't do anything over here. So what I want to do is, and very one first thing what uh, what I want to discuss is like whenever you are getting login through your root account and you don't want the access for the root login account to anyone, so you can delete your um, root access keys. So you can delete your root access keys directly so that if you are have able to get any particular thing, any particular access, so it is you know unauthorized access will be denied. So already have deleted this particular uh, root access. So I don't have to do anything over here. Next, I'm going to create an IAM user. So into left-hand side panel, you get users option over here. So I'm just going to click on users. And uh, here I have a button that is add user. So as of now, I haven't created any user over here now. So I'm just going to add a new user. And we can define the name of a user. So I can define a name as IAM test one. So you can even create any other user as well. So if I want to create multiple user here, so I can even create multiple users. Test two, right? So again, it is showing you um, second option, select AWS access type. So how you want your user is able to access this particular service, which you are going to uh, allow these users to access the services. So we have two different accessing mode. That is a programmatic access, like uh, if your user is accessing through your API, CLI, SDK, any particular programming mode, so you can enable it. Or if you are going to use directly a console access, like how we are using, uh, that's a graphical access directly through a browser, so you can even allow it. So if suppose I want the user should not be able to get programmatic access, so I can even deny this. So you need to select the user accessing more. So as your uh, company requirement is as per the users you have, you can select the accessing type. Next, we have a console password. So you do you require an authenticated auto generated password or custom password? So I want to define a custom password. So I'll just show you the password, what exactly I need to define. So we can define the password as it is like abc at rate one, two, three. So we can define it and it require password reset. So uh, you do you want that user once they get login should be able to reset the password for the first time they log in. So you can keep it as it is. So if you have created multiple users, so I have created two different users, the password is common for both the users. So for uh, I am test one as well as I am test two. So if uh, I'm defining a common password, so uh, it may happen like, you know, uh, this user can get get login through your, the other user account because the password is completely safe. So to maintain the confidentiality and security, we uh, generally ensure that all the users are changing the password once they log in for the first time. So I can keep it checked. Okay, and uh, we can go for permissions. Or if suppose you are creating only a single user, so that time you no need, no need to define this. Uh, create a new password. If you're going to assign a password or you're going to create an administrator account for yourself. So uh, I, I am defining a common password for both the users. So I'm just going for next. I'm just checking it over here so that they can get login and change the password whenever they require permissions. Now, if you go to the permission, there is again a option you have that is you can add the group from here itself or you can copy permission for an existing user so we don't have any existing user and we don't require a group right now so if suppose i want to create a group and add both the users into this group i can do it simultaneously but as of now i am going to attach a policy directly to the user so for example you have only one user and you want to attach some policy for that particular user so you can attach those policies. So just click over here and we'll show you some um, and build pre-created policies. So this is the pre-built policies which are available. So if suppose I want this particular user uh, that is I am test one and test two should get only a 
read only permission so we can search for read only so i need to search for read only uh, permissions here So this is read only access permission I have. I can attach this policy to the users. Just we need to go for next review. And you can see here uh, the usernames are I am test one and I am test two. Uh, they have both the access types over here. Password is customized. Password required password reset yes. And the manage policy you have a read only access and automatically as you define a required password reset a policy I am user change password has been set here and go for create users so once you create the user you can see uh, it is showing you uh, this is the access why where from where you can get login and this is a console access and if I want to copy this access or I want to open this access I can access it from here so this is a URL you need to provide to your user if they are going for a console login Oh, sorry okay so this is what exactly it is asking you directly to uh, change the user to that particular login so I don't want to change my user so I'm just going to get login directly through my AWS account so wait I'll, I'll just get login here so I have just logged in again and you can see um, as I logged in it's showing me the recent visited services so these are the services which I have re uh, visited recently so again I'll move into my IAM console so that we are able to see the number of users we have created and uh, you can see here two users uh, we are able to create and we have assigned a policy which is an inbuilt policy so it is not showing any custom managed policies right so uh, this is the option we have now again as i said like we can access to this particular users right so this this is a link which uh, actually we need to get uh, access over here and so you can see here this is a link which i need to copy so i'll just copy this link and i'll paste it over here and uh, once you get uh, paste this particular link on your browser it is showing you an account name so account name directly gets created here you can see this is the account name gets created and uh, you can uh, define your username so i'm just going to log in through my user i am test one and i'm just going to define the common password which i have set here and i have logged in so you can see as i have logged in for the first time it's asking me to change the password to continue so i need to define the old password and a new password So I will confirm password change. So once you have done, you can see um, I'm able to access the services. Now, if suppose I am trying to create a new user. So as we have defined a read-only policy to it, I should not be able to create a user here. So I'm just going to try to add my user, new user one. And I want that both the access to be given to this particular user custom password I have defined and uh, I don't want the user should change the password for the next time he's logged in so we can move here so uh, what I want to do is I'll go for next formation and uh, I'm going to attach a policy here views create user so you can see my uh, page is not going ahead as I'm not able to create any users right even if I uh, move into my um, s3 if suppose we have some storage here so let's see if I have any storage bucket so uh, there are a number of buckets which has been created now if i want to delete this bucket so i'll just move inside and there are a number of files available now if i want to delete any particular bucket here 
so um, delete object so you can see there is nothing uh, what exactly we delete wait a while just we'll move back and uh, i will just click here and i want to delete this part right so uh, delete object so you can see here it's showing you nothing to be deleted right so this is what exactly we get generally if suppose we have anything and if i want to delete any of the object from it and uh, you don't have any particular permission to delete anything right so if suppose i want to create a folder here new folder one and save you can see it is showing you an error fail to create a folder with name new folder one right as we don't have any permissions so if i want a permission i need to change the policy of a user so let us see how we are going to change the policy of a user of this uh, user i am test one so for that what i can do is i can again move into my i am i'll move into users in users i'll click on my i am test one and on i am test one i'll just add more policies so i'm going to attach more permissions attach existing policies directly and I'll search for administrative access to my user and go for review add permissions okay so I am through test one I'm just going to sign out over here and uh, I'm going to get login through my account again so once you uh, click on sign in by default it's going to um, provide access that is a url access for aim user but i want to sign in through my root user account so i need to click here sign in using a root account credentials so i'll sign in through my root account so let us so i have signed in and uh, now i will move into i am again i'll move into my user two and i am test one Again, I'll add the permission. I want to add an existing perm policy directly, and I'm going to search for administrator access. Select it, so it will allow you the full control permission for everything. Go for review, add permissions, and you can see that this permission will be added into your IAM test one. So, right? So the three permissions which we have. So all the policies which we have added are your inline policies. There are no custom policies which we have added. Now uh, I'll move back to my AM test one. I'll reload this account. And uh, now if you reload it, now you can check if I want to create a new folder anywhere I can. One and save this. So you can see the folder has been created same way if i want to attach any policies to any of the user like if suppose i want to attach the policy to my test um to user so we can even do that so i'll just move into my iam through my user iam right i am test one i can move into my users i can move into my test two i can add permissions of this particular test two as well so I'll just get login with my again this URL. And I'm getting login through my I am test one. I am And then as we said I can create any particular thing here even if I want to add a user as we have discussed into earlier um, previously when we haven't had any particular administrative rights we cannot able to create the user we were not able to create the user right so I am just um, going to create a user auto generated password or custom password okay so I just define the password here
so I'll go for next and fun. Okay, so I was irritating me. I'll just uh, hide it now and move into permissions. And uh, you can check, you can create a new user, user one, for example. I'm going to provide the access, custom password, add permission, attach a policy, whatever policy you want, you can. So, I'm going to provide an administrative access for this particular user and I'm going to create a user. Now you can see the user is getting created and I have created this user through my IAM test one. So as the IAM test one has an administrative rights, it can do anything now. So this is how we can uh, define permissions um, to the users and we can define the rights to the user so that uh, what kind of, uh, you know, consoles area they should be able to access it. Now even I'm going to define some permission like, uh, I have my user I'm just going to get log out of sign out of here and I'm just going to get login through my again uh, my root user account so I'll just log in through my user account and I'll get login securely and now you can see here uh, I want to modify some permissions like uh, here already I have defined a permission to IAM user one user test one uh, so that he has the complete administrative rights now for example I don't want to provide the complete administrative rights of the user so we can detach that particular policies which we have added the permission which we have added and we can add again other inline policies now if you want to add any inline policies so you can even generate a policy or you can create a custom policy. So I'm just going to uh, use a policy generator and we can define the policies. Like uh, I want to allow in my S3, okay. So S3 is um, the service which we have. So it will show you all the services which your AWS has. So I'm just going to define the policies on S3 or even we can define our AM. So both the service I'm going to define. So first I'll define on your S3 that wait let me find for your s3 okay so s3 is kind of selected so in s3 what the action i want to provide to my user so uh, i want to uh, provide an action so that he can delete the bucket or delete the object or create a new object right so i'm just going to provide a permission so uh, my user can create a new bucket as well as um, should be able to add content to uh, the bucket right list the bucket so list bucket permission we want to provide and then okay so create bucket policy we have added right and uh, this is the Amazon resource. So which uh, which kind of, uh, you know, the permission do you require? So you can even define some conditions or you can even define some resource names. So uh, you can click over here and it will show you the resource name available. So you, if you want to define an ARN, so you can even create a new bucket name. Uh, what do you want to define? So automatically it will be created. So just need to copy and paste it over here. So I don't want anything. I'll just define any name if you would say is getting to create. So you should be able to create it. So there is again a conditional optional. If you want some more conditions to be added, you can even add the timings like, you know, or any particular, uh, date which is equal to the value you can define so it will only create on that particular date so i don't want to go into advanced mode uh, that we are going to see later on so i'm just going to add this statement so once this statement is added you will be able to see this below the screen right so it is showing you the effect is allowed for this two permissions uh, this two uh, particular parameters we have allowed that s3 uh, in s3 the user will be able to create a bucket and list the bucket right so any resources now if i want to deny something like if i want to deny something into s3 itself amazon s3 itself the actions that you can see all the actions are your deny and delete options right 
So uh, the actions which I'm going to select is I should not be able to delete any object. So delete buckets, delete bucket policies, delete object, right? So I should not be able to delete any object, but I will be able to create the object. So I'm just going to deny it and any particular resource, I'm just going to use it, right? And again, I'll go for adding the statement. Same way if I want for defining the permission for IAM service, so I can even select for IAM. We'll need to search for IAM. IAM, okay, D and I. Identity access management. I want to allow my user uh, to provide some policies here so we can have different policies. So here I'm going to show you like uh, we can uh, provide a particular policy to our user to create a user and uh, change the password so we need to find out the policy which we want to define here so i'm going to change the action for change password so that user can change the password whenever he required and uh, also we will see uh, create a user so the user will be able to create the user and change the password and for any resource i'm going to define here add the statement so this is what exactly we added so i'll just take a snap of it and I'll just put it over here so that we can view it later on when it's required. So this is, uh, we are going to save it. So I'll go for next. After next, it is asking you to validate the policy. So we can click over here to validate the policy. So if there is any error, it will show you the error. Next, what we need is to do is we need to add a policy name so that we can define any particular name to our policies. So I'm just going to define policy one. And once you have defined this policy, validate the policy and go apply and save the changes. Now you can see the policy is applied for your user I am test one. So, right, so once we have done with it, again you can go to dashboard and again move to your console and uh, I'll paste it here. And uh, it is done. Now I'll just get login with my I am user. So I have just saved uh, my policies which I have added. So this is your allow policy for create bucket and list bucket. So we'll be able to see and create the bucket into your S3 service. Same way in deny service, so we have defined the deny to your e deleting a bucket. So decade bullet policies and delete object policies again denied and allow we have done for your change password and create users. So let us see over here, I'm getting login with my IAM test one. So first we are going to move into our policy that is S3. We'll check whether uh, we are able to see all the buckets. So we need to wait till it's listed here. So you can see you are able to list out all the buckets here. I'll be able to create the bucket here. So I'm just going to define the bucket name as demo bucket okay, for training purpose. And uh, once we have done with it, uh, I'll select the region and uh, I'll just click next. So I will enable the versioning of this bucket and login of this bucket. Go for next. And uh, here we don't have to do anything. As of now, I just want to manage the permission. You can, but as we don't, we don't have any authentication to manage any particular permission for our buckets. So it won't take any particular permission, but it will create our bucket. So create bucket. So it's showing you that a bucket of per bucket demo for training purpose is created successfully. As the settings, properties, and permissions on the bucket. So we have not defined the permission for managing policies and permissions to I am trying to delete this particular bucket or the object of this bucket. Like I want to delete this new folder. And I'll go for delete object and it's showing you error. The access is denied, right? Same way if any of the buckets I move and I try to delete anything from here. So uh, any particular object has been showing you error access is denied. Even if you want to delete a bucket or you want to delete any particular thing so from the bucket, it won't allow you so I just I'll define the name of the bucket like bucket for demo practicals and confirm so you can see again it is not able to delete it right 
So anyway, if you move uh, and delete the bucket, even you are trying to delete a new particular bucket you have, right? So that means uh, it is showing you an error that uh, uh, there is a, a permission denied for this particular, uh, you know, delete or the delete any particular bucket here. So same way you cannot delete any objects as well, any of the buckets which you have created. As in this source we have defined just as string. That means it is uh, provided to all the S3 services, containers, whatever we have. So the bucket which we have, right? Second thing what we have done is like we have denied deleting the buckets. We have uh, list the bucket. We have uh, we were able to create a bucket, right? But we were not able to delete the bucket. But I'm going to move into IAM into services so that we can uh, see how we can change the password of a user and how we can access it. So you can see uh, everything is deny over here. Everything is cost wrong. If you are moving to user, you can. I'm not able to even you to view the users as the uh, user permission don't have the for listing the users. So I'm just going to create a new user here. So I'm just going to add a user with name demo user one. And uh, I'll provide the authenticate you uh, for accessing from everywhere uh, for the change password permission, which by default assigned. So as we are going to click over here. So uh, next you can see the policy which has been added. Go for creating a user. It's showing you user created by the, with error. That means we haven't defined any particular user to add the policies to our uh, user which we have which are going to create. So you can see the user has been created by uh, or you know list not listed by you. So if I want to uh, list my users, so we can note it down from here, and I can get login through my administrator account or we can say root user account and then we can pay and uh, see everything so if I'm trying to get login with my demo user one and uh, I'm going to find a password for this user so we don't have the password as it is not a generated password I'll get login with my root account here and I'm going to change the password of my user so I'll just move into I am. This user should be present. That is use demo user one. So this user is present. But uh, the policies, uh, what exactly we have that is assigned. Uh, so as we know, uh, we are not able to assign any particular policy and permissions into your I am user one. So this is how we can define the permissions for I am user. So we have seen how we can create an I am user, how we can define permissions to I am user. So in the next session, we are going to start with our practicals where we are going to create a new EC2 and uh, AC2 instance, we can say. So we are going to assign policies, that is I am user policies for those particular instances which we are going to create. So keep watching and get over it.